up. Hello there, we're at, as you see, it's a bit dull today, it's, in, it's the beginning of September really, so, you know, we'll be moving into the autumn soon. So, um, you know, things will start dying off, you know, the leaves will start going in the lakes, weed beds will collapse, will sink and that, so we generally start to think about maybe starting to fish pop-ups again, and one of the most popular pop-up rigs of the day, or modern times, is like the old uh, chod rig, really. Uh, it's a rig I've used for over a decade and I've seen a lot of variations of it and a lot of people use it but realistically rather than just bang on about and show you how I tie mine up, I'll just really rather run you through a few key points and the two different ways I really fish it really. So well basically this is like a running chod, like it's, um, there's nothing stopping it below. I'll show you that a bit later, a fixed one, but um, generally I see a lot of people tend to use quite big leads with chod rigs. I don't, I like to use the smallest lead I can get away with to cover the distance to cast it, because you're not relying on the lead to hook the fish really, because it's generally the rig is sat down on the bottom of the lead core, so it's the weight of the lead core and the impact of the fish opening its mouth around it and hitting the, you know, its bottom lip hitting the bristle and turning the hook. So, you know, that's that bit, the lead. Um, the other bit here you can see is a buffer bead, quite a long one. I tend to use these on the running chod because as you get a take, fish tends to sort of run away with it. If your fish your clutch is quite tight, that this should happen, it will pull up to there and you're not getting like a whack against the lead with just a bead above it and that will cushion the blow, it'll stop you bumping fish quite quickly after the take which is something that happens quite often. Um, next up, as I've said before with other rigs, is a decent swivel. You know, it, they've got to re revolve well. Um, this is a size 12 Gardner like, link swivel. It's only got the one ring on it and the swivel. It's not got another ring above it or a, like a loop knot or anything. I prefer this to be in line. And, Basically, check your swivels like you do your hook points, make sure they spin well. It can be massive, you know, has a massive effect on the hooking efficiency of the rig. Uh, here we go down to trip wire. I'll curve this slightly, not aggressively. You do see some chod rigs, they've got massive curves. That's why they have to have rings and loop knots up here, to it, because the swivel has to be sat cock up right for it to revolve right. If it's leaning to one side, it's not going to work properly. So, um, yeah, this trip wire you can shape it get a gentle curve on it what i call um the rule of thumb which is i tend to have it about the same sort of curvature of my thumb really so like i said earlier fish comes in hits it with its bottom lip spins around it's nailed hooks generally sitting at 45 degrees with a tiny little gap probably about the thickness of a two pence coin or something between the bait and the hooks so you've got the movement there with the bait All right. obviously the bait's mounted on a little d-ring as you tie it tie it on through blob your um, dental floss or put bait stopping tight on how you like really I use all different ways of doing it I even use the bait screws as well uh, pop up again massively important it's got to be buoyant you know it's basically the easiest way to describe it, if you lower the rig 90 degrees into the lake, that pop-up has got to be buoyant enough to float the whole rig up to wherever you set your stop. And then, you know, we move on to the stop. Something I've, I believe some people maybe do wrong. They have to stop too far up the lead core, like five, six foot up. That's probably because they're not confident where it's landing or they're fishing over really high weed. That's fine. If you're fishing a high weed, you do that. Sometimes you don't need to have it that far. You know, you might only need 18 inches or a foot. I tend to try and have my up stop as close to the lead end as I could. So really, that's my running chod rig. And we'll move on to the other way I'll fish it, which is not really a lot different. It's basically small lead again. The buffer bead's the smaller one. But there's a reason for this. It's because I've fixed with a small piece of silicon up here, the bead. It's not fixed like hard, it will stay on. That will hold that up there. And then we've got another, the upper bead up here. These can be set wherever you like. 
But the reason why I like to use it like this sometimes, if you're casting, say, to a far margin or up tight against the weed bed, but you don't want to hit the weed bed, you know, you're hitting the clip on the reel, you don't, with the running chod, there's a risk that will fly up, hit the lead, and then when you feed it down, it's going to be close to the lead, not backed up against this backstop. You know, which generally open water, you can feel your lead down, the rig will drop at 90 degrees and it'll settle and fall back. But um, like going back to the smaller bead, the buffer bead, there's no point in having the big one to cushion this tape because as you hook a fish, that little bit of silicone will slowly travel up and then rest on there so you're not getting that whack effect you'd get with it close to the leg really. Uh, of course, you know, one of the things you hear a lot about chod rigs is people do tend to bump fish within a few seconds of hooking them. So, and that's normally because they might have fished their clutches a little bit too loose. I'd, I'd recommend you fish them as tight as you dare, really. So as, as the fish runs away, he's doing pulling the lead up to him. It's like a pulley system. Uh, everything else is the same as what I just described, really, on the other one. Slight curve, you know, shape of my thumb, hooks it in just a couple of mil, movement below it decent pop-up that will stay buoyant and lift the rig up the lead core really so again length of lead core is entirely up to the angler really you know you can use a shorter length if you don't need to have uh, you know a long running chod you can put a bit of putty up your line or whatever um, I must admit I'm more a fan of a chod rig with lead core and let the weight of the lead core drop it down to the bottom rather than um, using what we call the naked chod on fluorocarbons now. And if I ever do have to fish a naked chod with fluorocarbons, I'll always have a short length of lead core above the, le the lead, so when this runs down, you're playing a fish on lead core to avoid getting cut off. So basically, really, that's the few tips I've got for chod rig, really. Uh, give it a go, eh?